Next, what we need to do is we need to download WebStorm. So if we head over to jetbrains.com slash WebStorm, we have here the download page of the WebStorm JavaScript IDE. If we hit download, we are going to download a trial version of WebStorm. So this is the most stable version of WebStorm that you will find. If you want to try out the latest features of WebStorm, you can also search for the WebStorm Early Access Program and this gives you a new version of WebStorm that is not yet released but contains maybe a lot more features if you want to try them out. In this course I will be using the stable version of WebStorm. Once we have WebStorm downloaded, we are going to open it and we are going to find a screen similar to this one saying Welcome to WebStorm. We are going to click open and we are going to navigate to the folder where our code was unzipped. In this case we are going to open the folder at this location and this is what the opened project in WebStorm will look like. If you hit Alt F12 you are going to open the terminal that we will be using a lot in this course. Now before doing anything else we are going to set up TypeScript inside the IDE. So for that what we are going to do is we are going to first install TypeScript. So we head over to the command line and we confirm which version of Node we have installed. To do so we head over to the command line and we type Node-V. So this shows that we are running Node 6.9.0. Now let's install TypeScript globally to begin with. Later we are going to learn how to install it locally to the project and what are the advantages of it. Right now we are simply going to install it globally by using npm install minus g TypeScript. Remember as usual you might have to throw in here in the beginning a sudo if you are in Mac or Linux. So I will just go ahead and do that and install TypeScript globally. This should take a moment but very quickly you should have installed your TypeScript executable that we will be using in the first few sections of the course. To confirm that the TypeScript compiler is installed correctly you can type tsc-v and you should see here some version of the TypeScript 2 compiler. So in this case at the moment of recording we have 2.0.3. Now in order to ensure you the best experience possible you should at this stage before doing anything else configure WebStorm to use the same version of the TypeScript compiler as you will be using from the command line. This is to make sure that you don't get different error messages in the command line and in the IDE which would be rather confusing. So you find out where your TypeScript executable is, so in this case I have used the which command in a Mac, which would also work if you are using git bash in Windows, so you copy this path that we will be needing and we are going to head over here to the WebStorm settings, so preferences, we are going to set up TypeScript here. So first we should use the node interpreter, we should use also the version 6.9.0 that we are using from the command line. So this is to avoid discrepancies between the WebStorm environment and the command line environment. So here we will switch from version 6.3.1 to the version 6.9.0 that we are also using from the command line. And we are going to set up a custom version of TypeScript. We are going to point WebStorm to the same version that we are using from the command line. So we paste here the path to the TSC executable. But we are not going to click OK at this point. We are going to delete here a couple of top level directories and we are going to open the 6.9.0 folder. So here what we are going to do is we are going to open lib and we are going to drill down to node modules. We are going to find here the TypeScript folder and here we have a lib directory. So this is the one that we should select. We click OK. So you should have something like the directory where your Node.js is, lib, node modules, TypeScript, lib. And you will see here that this is the TypeScript lib directory. So this custom directory should point to the TypeScript lib directory where a couple of files are found. So this is the correct one. We're going to click OK. And you have here 
a custom version. So currently WebStorm is using the custom version of TypeScript that we just pointed it to. Now we are going to click enable the TypeScript compiler and we are going to see in a moment why this is necessary. For the moment we will not use a tsconfig.json. So let's click apply and OK. At this stage you should now see here at the bottom a TypeScript pane where you will see the TypeScript project errors. So this step that we took of configuring WebStorm to use the exact same version that we are going to use in the command line of TypeScript is really important. If you use separate versions you might get separate error messages and it would just be confusing. So please take the time to get this setup correct so that you can better enjoy the course. If you have followed these steps you should now have a solid developed environment to take the most out of this course, so let's get started writing our first TypeScript program.